What's up guys? So <laughs> I just tried doing a live broadcast on um, YouTube uh, through the uh, Emos app and apparently my sound didn't come through, which is sad. And I'm just, I'm hoping my sound is gonna come through here. I'm just kind of checking some elements here. I just, yeah, hopefully. You can never know because you can't watch yourself unless you have a, a second device and I'm mobile right now. But yeah guys, so uh, hopefully I can rescue this broadcast. I'm still trying to find the best platform for uh, Relate Nate. And I wanted to do it in YouTube, but I kind of like the idea of doing it live and regular uh, weekly. So we'll just play with it here this week and kind of rebroadcast what I just finished on YouTube, which is uh, while we bash our significant others. Like I'm sure you've noticed, right? Like whenever you're in a social circumstance, somebody complains about their significant other, everybody else chimes in about how bad theirs is as well. And that's a weird thing to do and think because you know, like if, if I'm with a bunch of my guy friends and they're bashing their girls or their ladies or their wives or whatever, um, or the guys, whatever the case may, case may be, like I don't chime in because I have nothing to bash. <laughs> and like, I'm not trying to be all like, oh, I have the perfect marriage. I don't want to bash my spouse. I don't want to bash my wife because she's awesome and I love her, I care for her, and I want to respect her. And um, I feel like there's a social pressure to bash on your significant others when somebody else is having a bad day because you want to affirm them, right? You want to give them the support. But the problem is you start to create this in culture of, hey, let's just keep bashing our significant others because if so-and-so had a terrible time with their boyfriends or their fiance or their husbands, then, then we need to get in on it too. Or if somebody has a, a girlfriend that's being you know, disrespectful or, or whatever, then we need to get on that too and start bashing people. And I think that's a terrible way of going about things because then we start to learn that Bad relationships are good, right? We're not even good, but expected and normal. We start to learn that everyone is having a terrible time. So if terrible is so common, then it's normal. And I think that's a terrible way of going about life. It's a terrible way of building communities and, and cultivating your social circles. I think this starts at a young age, at least for me. Um, it started at a young age because when you get to grade school, right, it, it becomes this normal thing. You're separated into different groups, uh, you know, even homerooms against homerooms or grades against grades. And then if you have... Uh, siblings, right? They're a social liability because they're way younger, way older, they're not cool. Uh, and then there's this whole element of uh, even as we get into teenagers, right? Our, our general family, especially our parents uh, and guardians become uncool and become our social liability. And we start bashing on them. Oh yeah, they always um, take away my privileges and uh, they're unreasonable. They always want me to do this and that or they never want me to do this and that. And we carry that negativity and this intra-competitive bashing uh, into our spousal type relationships, into our dating, uh, our long-term relationships, our significant others, and ultimately, um, you know, uh, marriages. If you go that, if you decide to take that route, and I feel that's so destructive and so sour and so bitter and so tragic that becomes a cultural norm for us. Because more likely than not, you're with the person you're with because they generally make you happy and fulfilled in some way. And it's just so damaging that when we get into these in-groups that we start to value our friends over our significant others in that moment. And we're so freely just bashing on our significant others because, oh yeah, they, I hate it when, you know, my, my, my uh, woman does this or my guy does that. Everyone does that. They all do that. It's so terrible, blah, 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 blah. And it's like we're trying to be more loyal to that social circle in that moment than to the people that we are committed to spend, you know, perhaps the rest of our lives with. And we don't want to be that one. We don't want to be that guy or that gal. We don't want to be the person with the perfect relationship. Oh, so nice for you, right? There's that idea that we have to all suffer together. And I don't think that needs to be the case. I think what we can absolutely do is start cultivating some positive connection type relationships where we help each other see it from the other person's point of view. And we try to help each other uh, grow past some of the immediate frustrations that are normal and innate to relationships, especially to significant others and spousal type relationships. You know, I think we get into this habit of bashing because not only do we want to support our immediate social circles in the moment, uh, but we also want to feel part of the, the club, right? Misery loves company. If there's a bunch of misery around us, we don't want to be part of that same club until we take a look back and go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I chose this. <laughs> like I chose to be with this person. So how does that reflect on me when I'm constantly bashing the person I chose choosing to be with, right? I'm, I'm the guy that chose this. And so rather than go down that route, right? Rather than, um, rather than go down this route of being so negative, 
I think what we really need to do is realize, just like in life, and I'm sure we've all learned this lesson um, through pretty bitter channels uh, in the last couple of political seasons, is we have a lot to disagree on. We really do, because we're unique individuals. But we probably have even more that we agree on. If you were to sit down across a bar with somebody or in a coffee shop or bumping them at a bus stop, more likely than not, you have way more things in common that you agree with than you disagree with. And the disagreements, a couple of them might be critical core issues, deal breakers, if you will. So what? You're not going to be in a spousal relationship with them. But most of the stuff is probably minutia. And so I want to encourage you guys, you know, and just uh, then let me know what you think as well, is that if you're in a, if you're looking, you know, you're, you're, you're seeking, you're looking, you're dating, you're looking to get into a more significant, you know, spousal, significant other type relationship, I would encourage you that if there are bashings going along around in your immediate social circumstances, A, you don't participate in it. B, you find a way to, sh to do a share if you feel it's appropriate, but share it in a positive way, right? If, if it's like, uh, you know, let's just make fun of the toilet seat thing, right? The toilet seat's always up, blah, 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 blah. Well, go about it and, you know, if you're a guy, you know what, I, I just gotta, I, I need to fix that because it's just more courteous and I'd be a more loving person uh, towards, uh, you know, in this case, you know, my woman, if I were just to put the seat down, I'd be, uh, at least it's going in the direction of gravity, <laughs> you know, something like that. And, and just take ownership of it. And, and if you're a gal and you're significant other as a guy, you can make it a little bit more humorous, you know, like you can like, yeah, sir, the girl guy thing. We all grew up living this one way for the majority of our lives, doing a certain bodily habit in a certain way. And so it's just kind of humorous that it always occurs. And instead of making this, this grand thing about how awful our significant others are, and rather appreciate them instead, or redirect the entire conversation into some type of appreciation because it does nobody any good. It doesn't do yourself, your relationships, your families, your, your friends, it doesn't do anybody any good if all you do is spout how negative your connections are with people, rather than finding ways to elevate others. Because as you elevate others and you're generous and kind and loving and encouraging and edifying in that way, people will elevate you back. And they won't do it as like a, well, you know, I'll, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. It becomes a culture, right? It becomes a way of thinking. It becomes a way of processing how we connect with others. And we choose. It's a choice, guys. It's a choice to be positive. It's a choice to be encouraging. And it's absolutely a choice to not bash, but rather elevate, encourage, edify, love, everything. And so... You know, uh, most of you guys know I'm kind of a more of a warm, warm and fuzzy guy. I'm pretty realistic though. I mean, there's certain things. I'm a firm believer that if a relationship is, you know, if it's a breakup, the relationship is probably broken in some way. You might have the chance of fixing it, but you may not. There's some reality points there. But the truth is this. You're probably with the person you're with for one good reason or another. And may or may not last. We don't know. But while it is, why don't you cherish it, right? And if you see bashing going around, in, in my opinion, it's no different than in-group social bullying. Put a stop to it and focus on what makes you guys fulfilled. Why are you guys together? And, uh, you know, I talked about this in the, the broadcast that apparently went mute <laughs> because of a, a poor interface with YouTube. Uh, and, you know, I brought the idea of the consummate love triangle, right? If you, are, if you have passion, if you have commitment, and if you have intimacy and connect on deep issues, that's consummate love. That's rare, Right? And if, you, if you're missing a little bit of one of the tips of the triangle, try to, you know, try to connect a little deeper, but ultimately value these things. Because connecting with somebody as a significant other and doing it in such a deep, meaningful, committed way uh, that also has intimacy and passion, that's a beautiful thing. And it shouldn't be bashed. And we should really cultivate um, this appreciation and this love for us so that bad isn't normal, good is normal. All right, guys, that's all I got for Relate and A for this week. Hopefully that, uh, let's see. Oh, nine minutes. I'm over time. Got to go. <laughs> Hopefully this audio worked out. Um, I think Facebook Live is still trying to figure out like some of the uh, broadcasting issues because I've noticed for sure like some of the interfaces that used to be there aren't there. Uh, let me know what you think about Facebook Live as perhaps a new home for Relate and A. Maybe I can just repurpose this and uh, push it forward to YouTube rather than um, doing, you know, record and produce pieces. And uh, let me know what topics you like. I have something like 280 topics I'm trying to get through. So it should be a lot of fun. All right, have a great rest of your Sunday, guys. Take care.